Okay, everyone, this is Jabbertaki and Rochelle, and we recently watched Don John, and this is our Don John's Addiction, and this is our review of the movie. I don't like this. Why? I'm not Rochelle. Like, hey, I just found this chick outside my apartment complex and wanted to ask her what she thought of the movie. This will unfortunately be our last show together. <laughs> First off, I'd like to say that thank you for coming with me. It wasn't as easy as you guys think to get her to do it. I have what was it? A very, a very, a very big IOU, I suppose. Either way, I'm indebted to you. <laughs> He's helping me clean. Yeah. I just feel like I should clean. I'm gonna have <laughs> clean. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'm gonna have to do a lot of cleaning after this video. So, except we're doing our Breaking Bad impressions too. So. Forewarning, there will be some spoilers, but we're gonna let you know, hey, spoilers, whatever happens after this point is your fault, not mine, even though I'll be giving you the spoilers, I still warned you. The movie is about a man who has a serious porn addiction. You have this hyper-realized world in which Joseph Gordon-Levitt is this character who's addicted to porn, and he thinks it's okay. He's like, every guy looks at porn, everybody does it, and this is where the satire is the strongest is that they represent all these characters who are exaggerated archetypes. Every scene with the family, those were my favorite scenes in the movie. Besides one scene in the hallway, which I don't want to spoil just yet. <laughs> but every time they, sh they showed the family, um, Tony Danza, he was always watching football. You mentioned the, uh, the sister. Yeah, was always on her phone. Um, that was her method of escape. And one major theme in the movie is just that everybody has some way that they're trying to escape from life and mm. from reality, and hers was her phone. I thought the satire was really well done. Scarlett Johansson's character, obviously one of the most important characters in the movie, mm -hmm. she was obsessed with the ideal romance, yes. which of course involves Channing Tatum so, <laughs> in the movie that they had, which was a nice touch. The movie shifts in the third act. I thought the satire was great up to that point. And then I, I felt like it wasn't really a satire anymore. What did you think? Yeah, there was a shift from more of a comedy to this is what's wrong with us, we've all got issues. Yeah, yeah. I felt it became a little preachier. And great mm -hmm. point. Yeah, the comedy kind of the comedy kind of dissipated at that point in the movie. I noticed that at the end of the movie, a lot of our, our, the people in our screening were actually really vocal about what they thought of the movie. Yes. When I, in the women's restroom, there was a group of maybe five or six women that... Were like, great movie pick, Erica, or whatever her name was, and they just were really disenchanted. I don't <laughs> want to say turned off. Oh, I wish you could have been there. But, um, so what did you think about the acting in the movie? The acting? I felt like the acting was good, but I had some problems with the character portrayals, and I was talking hmm. about how I felt that Scarlett Johansson's character in particular was really flat. I felt like they were acting really well, just the character she was handed, unfortunately, was very one note. Yeah, she, like I said, didn't have a lot of dimensionality. Is yeah. That yeah, yeah, and it was great to see Tony Danza again. I love, I love him. He I haven't funny. seen him on TV in he forever. Was it was hilarious. Uh, I felt like Joseph Gordon-Levitt did a great job. He wrote, directed, and acted in this movie. So you can tell he was really passionate about it, and he was a dynamic character. I really like his character. Some critics said that they didn't like how cartoonish some of the scenes and characters were. But I felt like that was the strength of the satire, which I, I thought was a very successful satire, again, until the final act. Spoiler warning, proceed at your own risk. In the final 20 minutes, I felt like the satire disappeared, and it became a little preachier. It became more of a straight-up drama in which um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Julianne Moore's character, spoilers again, they start up... They start up a relationship, basically, yeah. which got a little weird, and I feel like that's a little bit of what our audience was... Uh, found uh, some of the audience first, members. Too. I thought it was a re really good move because it really subverted your expectations and surprised you. I felt like that helped with the potency of the message. We find out Julianne Moore has her own addiction, which is she's, uh, she's a pothead and um, <laughs> she's a drug addict. But in a way that I felt like she was sort of representing what Joseph Gordon-Levitt could become. One of the major points in having her character in there is that Joseph Gordon-Levitt and his addiction with to porn um, is that it's very one-sided. He doesn't have to 
put a lot into it, um, and these are just ideal airbrushed women with no flaws, and even Scarlett Johansson, you know, physically is flawless, yes. but Ju <laughs> Julianne Moore is, represents the real woman. They have emotional scars, they're not, you know, they come with baggage, they, they have quirks, and you just have to deal with these things because they're real women and you know our relationship is a give and take and in turning to porn he was trying to escape that and have it just be one-sided yeah that awkward bathtub scene i can't forget that yeah. <laughs> as you mentioned it was sort of an oedipus scenario yeah uh from a literary standpoint it's like in like the story of oedipus so she drew a bath for him, and she goes to the closet to get a towel for him, mm. and is just hugging the towel to her and crying, because I think she was imagining all the times that she bathed her son. And they really intentionally set it up to make you feel like that's what she was thinking, um, which made the whole scene and the whole fact that they had a sexual relationship really disturbing to me. Yes. Real quick, um, what did you think of the very end of the movie? I felt like the end of the movie was very contrived. I think yeah. the ending was kind of thrown together and very flat and just felt like, uh, we've got all this great stuff, but how can we just wrap it up and, you know, be done with it? Yeah, I, I completely yeah. agree. Because I, like, I felt like Scarlett Johansson was such a pivotal character for Joseph Gordon-Levitt's journey in the story, in the narrative. But at the end of the movie... Um, he apologizes to her for everything, and she's like, "Oh, okay. So what do you expect? I'm not. I don't. You know." She's like, "That's all you gotta say to me. Don't and, call me again." And, and then, then that leaves. was all she gotta say. Yeah, so. but I don't feel like that's very realistic for most women. I feel like most women would have heard him out and yeah. said something like, "Well, you know, I'm glad you're working on yourself." Um, I wish you the best. Something like that. I felt like either either Joseph Gordon-Levitt and whoever else wrote the script with him didn't know where to go at that point. They didn't know how to deal with rejection. <laughs> um, they didn't know either either didn't know where to go at that point, or they were trying to tie it up really quick, and they just wanted to give the audience a little tidbit. Okay, here's Scarlett Johansson. He apologized to her. Now she's done. Let's get to the end of the movie. I felt like her character really deserved a, a better conclusion than that. Um, the story did end abruptly after that. Like, within five minutes, the movie's over. And it ends with him saying that, you know, I've, I've found something that's better that um, that's better than me watching all this porn, something that's real. And he's with Julianne Moore, they're holding hands, and mm -hmm. they're looking into, into each other's eyes, and then the movie ends. Which I just honestly don't feel is believable. Yeah. For me, I'd say I'd give it a 6.5 out of 10. That's what I was going to say. I'd say it a 6... Oh, okay. <laughs> I just kind of stole her score. I'd give it a 6.5 out of 10. Overall, there were a lot of great laughs, and I want to make sure I give credit where credit's due. I got a lot of great laughs out of the movie. The message was a good message, though I didn't think it tied up very well at the end. I still appreciated what was there on the screen, and I'd say it is a good time at the movie. 6.5 is still a very good score. It's just not a classic by any means, but there's a lot to enjoy in this movie. And expect to be a little surprised, which I think is a strength. So this is Jabber Talkie. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this review and got a lot out of it. Go see Don John's Addiction. I think it's well worth watching. Go in with an open mind. Just leave your expectations at the door. I think you'll be surprised and have a great time. This is Jabber Talkie and Rochelle. Out. Out.